All right, folks, we're back. Uh, we're just waiting on Soul. Uh, Optimus's teammate appears to be a little AFK at the moment, but that's fine because they've actually had to wait a considerable amount of time. Like, they've been on deck. They won their match, and they've been sitting here for, like, like half an hour at least, if not longer. So I don't blame them for being AFK. We'll give them some time to come back. Worst case scenario, we just go to the other semifinals if Soul has, like, truly disappeared. But um, apparently Optimus... Oh, 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 they have a team name. I didn't know that before we made the tweet. It was bad, man. But ba Baboon, or 8 Baboon, is Baboon with like leet speak and numbers? I don't know. The Sal Salvation Army versus Team Baboon. Baboons. Baboons. It's plural. You know. Hmm. Ah. Well, hopefully he will be paying attention to Discord soon enough. You know, Discord has video calling now. I thought that was in beta. Is it actually launched or? I have no idea. I just know I have the option. Oh, so I, I heard I'm... that it was released to specific people to test. Yeah, and it's in like this beta form, but I hadn't heard anything else uh, about it beyond that. But, um, anyways, while we were on break, of course, uh, we had another Prime sub come in because apparently today is Prime Day. Uh, thank you to Basilid or Basilide. I'm sorry, however you pronounce that name. My bad. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. And then just now, Errol DM81 comes back for two months to say, hate to see my sub streak go, but that happens when you change credit cards. Love 2v2s. Keep it up. Ah, uh, uh, thank yes. You. Thank you, dude. All about that. <laughs> so I want to get a drink and suddenly it's gone. Press F to pay respects. Uh, so I mentioned it in chat, and I was hoping more people were streaming, but I guess not. If you guys don't know, Beastie Cutie is streaming his first-person point of view, but there's actually more to it than just that for once. He's on Skype with Nurchio or Discord or whatever, so they are going to be having some conversation between them. I think is a very interesting guy for whether you love him or hate him. His commentary is always very, very, very good to listen to when the rare times he streams. So I gotta imagine that plus conversation with BC would probably make for some pretty fun content. So be sure to head on over and check that out. Hmm. But yeah, so we have three best of fives remaining at this point, guys. Uh, two semifinals and the grand finals. Yep, yep, yep. I really, really like... Oh, this is gonna be a good one. It's, it's two Terrans versus Terran Zerg again, but it's like a different dynamic. Almost no Protoss left at this point, and I'm not sure what happened with Harstam's team. Oh wait, that is the amusement park. Yeah. Harstam and Lambo, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a stupid name, I love it. <laughs> That's an amazing name. Yeah, we're already out of Protoss. Protoss has actually been kind of good well, in 2v2. Well, Harstam. We're almost out of Protoss. Oh, sorry, Protoss I thought you said we, I you said we are out of Protoss. My bad, my bad. Oh yeah, we only have one left out of eight players. I mean, it's not too unusual for when we won tournament. Well, while we are waiting for Soul to come back, and like I said, we'll give him a few more minutes and we'll just swap the series so we don't sit here waiting too long. To give you guys an idea of what was going on, we had a 2v2 tournament set up. Uh, big shout out to this guy named Brian. He, he threw $550 together, so it's already a massive prize pool to host a 2v2 tournament with the Koreans because he, he just loves watching Korean players. And he said, hey, Base Rate TV, if uh, you know, I threw some bucks like, into the prize pool, could you guys host this for us? And we're like, Absolutely. Like, we love doing stuff. We love working with fans in this regard, right? So, that was supposed to happen today, but there ended up being a conflicting tournament that prevented players from playing, so we have to move it. Now, I don't know where we're moving it to yet, but it will be sometime this coming week. We're just trying to find a day that's available for everybody. But, uh, if you guys enjoyed the heck out of this 2v2, hopefully you'll enjoy the Korean one as well. When we get around to it. Here you go. I have some cat. Cats, 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 everybody. To answer your question too, base trade, my prime is totally because I love 2v2 play. Well, it's good to hear, dude. Huh. Well, this one. Oh, yeah. Do that uh, one. I, put, I put a hard time on it saying if, if this isn't, uh, if he's not back in five minutes from now, we'll, we're gonna go do another the other semifinals first. <laughs> I'm gonna read this, and I know there's nothing behind me because I can see my <laughs> camera, but you know, 
Rifkin, who's that lady dressed in all black, pale face, eyes redder than the devil's deck hovering above you with no feet holding a mini head of you? To be honest, it might be my roommate. <laughs> but I can't talk about it. I can't talk about it. Soon. Their eyes are redder than the devil's deck. I, uh, I think I know what he was going for there, but... <laughs> Yo, so story time for Rifkin. I got to go to the beach yesterday, and I never go to the beach. And frankly, I never go outside the house. But I had a friend invite me, and I, I just, to be honest, would probably have normally declined this. But I couldn't, uh... Wait, can we do Game Heart? I guess we'll figure uh, this hosting thing out after. Um, I couldn't, I just couldn't. With all the stuff that's been going on at home, I just had to get out of the house. So I went down to the beach next, knowing what to expect. And... We actually ended up, I guess, I was expecting this just to be like a day at the beach with a couple of friends. I didn't realize that this was like a mini convention thing with anime people. So we go to the beach and there's like a ton <laughs> of cosplayers on the beach. And like some of them are like really sexy. And then some of them are like in really funny cosplay. And some are just like looking cool and whatever. So it's like you're, you're, it had a good spread of people. Um, I tweeted some of the pictures yesterday. One of my favorite was like this combination Soldier 76 and Mercy and their summer game skins running around handing out juice and snacks and watermelons to people. Uh, some people were just like straight up anime characters doing like photo shoots and stuff. But I didn't realize the group of girls that I was meeting up with were also going to be all doing like kind of super sexy bikini beach shoot stuff. So I got to spend all day with it and try out my camera for once. Like I've had, uh, I've had this Canon camera for a while that I've only ever used for vlogging or like when we're taking videos and stuff. I'm still not really taking any pictures with it, so it was the first time I got to do that, which was kind of cool. And I feel like, like there's this guy, because there's like all these pro photographers around, I was asking these questions like, so how do I actually take pictures, right? Other than just like autofocus and stuff. And they were, they were walking me through how to like, use, like shutter speed and brightness and like the angles and all this. And it was really cool. I had actually a really fun time doing it. And I'm hoping that, um, like I'm gonna ask permission if I can post a couple of the pictures I took because I think I actually I took I took like a hundred pictures and ended up with like three good ones But you know, whatever <laughs> Isn't that photography though? That is that's what I was told by everybody that like look the trick is you just take enough pictures that eventually one will be good, right? Huh. That's pretty cool. I had a good time And then someone uh someone there had I, I saw a bunch of other kids by the way I didn't go to their group or anything, but I was walking by them. They were playing red flag <laughs> Good game. I, I need to buy my own so that like when you're not here I can play that with people. <laughs> oh my god, he's back just in time. Okay. Everybody is spamming chat and it brought soul back from the dead. Alright, let's uh it's it's actually BCQ it's BCQD con. Why is Harpsum spamming amazing gaming done that? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, guys, we're ready to go. Sorry for all the downtime. Looks like the hiccups are through, and we're just going to confirm all the players are here. I'm going to do a greedy little shout-out quick, though, because while well, we've done an awesome job with the help of you, the fans, raising $100 for today's prize pool, or over, over 100 excuse me, because that was just the codes, we've raised $400 in total for today's prize pool. It would be my best satisfaction if we could offset the $100 we put into it, so if you're feeling up to it, guys... 100 bucks to us is what we're aiming for for today's stream. But of course, I'm plenty happy oh with a lot of the prime subs we've got. Yo, why are the colors matching for once? And I can see pings. Maybe we should oh, use Game Heart. Yeah, you mentioned Game Heart, and I was like, I was using it just out of habit for the games that I made, and it was, it didn't even do anything, so I don't see a point in using it. <laughs> All right, well, we got cheese and stuff happening, guys. So let's get into this best of five semifinals match spawning here in the bottom side of the map. We got the combination of Beastie Cutie and Nurchio. Team Slavation Army. The dumbest map, and I hate it. In the top left, uh, is the Teal Terran. It's Optimus. His teammates, uh, Purple Terran, Soul. Wait, how do you have colors? Mine are just red and blue. What? Oh, I, I hit Alt F at some point. Okay. Never mind, it's all fixed and sorted. Anyways, you guys see pings like crazy because that's them communicating to each other and obviously proxies are being set up out of both Terrans. I gotta imagine they think this is coming because here's the thing about like Nurchio, Beastie, Optimus, Soul. These are all actually fantastic players. We've had in the finals of both of our live events as well as our offline events, uh, online events, excuse me, and offline events. But the thing is, I think BC might have a bit of an edge here. I've seen him play more competitive team games than I think any of the other players in this game. 
So I don't know how much he does it like on his own, relax, play ladder, like he should expect something like this because every time I've played on this map, if it's not stupid air attacks because of the, the dead space on this map, it's proxies in these locations. This is such an absurd looking map. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> look at all this airspace, man. It's just I mean, like I like the idea. You know, it was a flooded city, so there's like lightning and stuff going on too. That's that's cool. I, uh, I actually think there's more water on the map than there is uh, land. I think, yeah, I think that's actually the case. Well, anyways, oh. we're gonna see them ping, saying like, "Let's go this way," I guess. Yeah. Uh, so it's gonna be a lot of pressure for BCQD and Nurchio, but Nurchio's already on his way to a Roach Warren. BCQD, uh, of course, one basing it. I like the Anything bunker. Anything else in this map is very difficult. The bunker is going to help out a little bit, not a lot, but it will help. There she yeah. Lings will soak a couple of hits too while the Reapers come out of BC. He's a bit supply blocks. Ooh, ooh. There you go. It's sort of in a CV dies. Helping. Little. Uh, the Queen walks her way over, took some time. She'll be able to take some hits, but really, it's still four Reapers is the problem. Right. Uh, I mean, uh, you know. I guess, worst case scenario, they could just try and tap away at the hatchery and force units to come down to them. As the roaches are already out, I'm not sure they're going to get any more damage on Nurtio's main base. That's a, that's a no. Well, I guess I'm going to ask chat really quick too, so I didn't even think about this. Do you guys prefer color matching or do you want individual colors? So we're going to vote in chat. Type 1 if you want things to be like this and it's just red versus blue. Or type 2 if you want individual colors separating each player. So apparently I figured out how to do it. <laughs> yeah, Anyways. I mean, I don't like the uh, team colors if they're the same race and the same... Uh, like, all yellow and... But it's like, all yellow and y'all uh, green, maybe? Well, or anyways, all we'll, I'll let chat see what they want to say. Maybe they want all colors, maybe they don't. Again, uh, one for red versus blue, two for all colors. Anyways, the tentative Reaper attack does not appear to have snowballed out of control. And we actually even have Beastie going for a starport behind this. If he gets air units out for defense, like he has absolutely locked us down in that case. Yeah, uh, this is a cyclone. That's a bit surprising. <laughs> yeah, that's enough Reapers. Uh, that Ravager skin actually looks like you know, it's like the it's like the Baneling. It's like one of those balls that like a stress ball, especially when it turns its back on the camera. Well, it's like it's got a little skirt, is what it has. Well, it's more like, you know, like in the olden times where they had that big collar around their neck? It was very, like, you know... <laughs> the evolution yeah. of chokers. Yeah, it's like that thing, the huge one, like Shakespeare wears. That's what they have going. They do look like they're emo. I mean, the colors, right? Like dark purple and black and dark blue. You know... <laughs> emo chip with choker on it. I wasn't thinking about this in a, in a Shakespearean way, but now I can totally see what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to be fancy. All these units are like, we've actually just been like so critical of all these units, like in their wear. They're trying to be fashionable and they're just like, it's not working. Hard pass. I, I want to think Abather has been like reading fashion magazines and it's like time to upgrade. <laughs> but he's still really bad at it. So, trying to see down the rocks and over the back you know, expansions are, of course, gold bases, uh, soul, and. And his ally both uh, started getting starports too, so I guess not getting too stuck on the Reapers. They've done a pretty good job causing aggression, which has kept Beastie at home, has kept Nurchio at home. And now with the added Banshee in, uh, prolongs how long this staying power is. And the beauty of air units on this map is they really have all this air space to work with, so retreating is not too difficult. That is absolutely true. Do you remember what your options were? Yes, one for same colors, two for different colors. And it seems to be pretty split down the middle right yeah, now. Yeah, it's, it's pretty split. You can't tell who's wondering. Well, I prefer, I personally prefer split colors. So if, if it comes down to kind of even tie, we'll just, uh, we'll just split them. Okay. All right, so uh, a lot of airspace for these units uh, to roam around. Parrox even trying to scout the matches have been taken. Not quite yet. BCQ could be just taking on one base for a while longer. Soul is expanded to the not gold. Optimus is expanded to the gold. The game goes to mid game. Uh, Reaper is going to be used sparingly. You know, one problem, though, while this has gone on, and not as a consequence of damage, but more of a consequence of build, BC doesn't have like any workers to work with, and he doesn't have like a gold base to transfer over to after. Like, 
I'm actually a little bit worried about him. His second CC like it, here, but there's just... He's actually, of all the players, the furthest behind. That he is. Probably just stayed a little bit too long, just defensive mindset. When the Reapers really... You can only commit so long on the Reapers before you're just really willing to throw the game. And once they saw the Roaches were out, I feel like that's when you're just like, okay, this probably isn't going to work. You just go to whatever drones we can and, and get out. And BCQD stood on uh, one base for a lot longer than that. Of course, he also kind of gave his partner the open base that's close by them. So one of them would have had to break down those rocks. And maybe they're also, again, still scared of the Reapers to do that. I don't know, but it's, it's definitely a lot later. Nerchu has gone from Yudas, which Optimus and Soul don't quite have defenses for yet. The missile turrets that I can see. You know, I really like the idea of Mutas too. I, I feel the problem is when you do go Mutas in 1v1, you know, you have to commit so much money and gas into it that you just, you either have not enough ground to support it or you're left with a very fragile army. And I think, ooh, this is a really nice run by, by the way. Um, or drop, I should say. I think the idea that BC can cover those gaps, allowing Nurture to go just straight up Mutas. I'm thinking back to every 1v1 game we've cast where Rogue's gone like 40 Mutas and looks unstoppable, right? Well, can BC QD cover those gaps? Now, he was the one that was attacked, so in a weird way, he definitely just did. That their base is going to be denied. Soul and Optimus are going to have a lot of pressure to give. You know, they both went Marine Medivac. Uh, although, actually, I think Optimus is transferring over now. So, never mind. Double yeah. armory for that guy. What's interesting, too, is while well, well, Nurchio uh, probably has the biggest prowess of all four players in this game, I actually think it's totally feasible that any one player could beat any other one player in this matchup. Like, they're all that good. Hmm. Well, Mavs Vikings will do the trick against one of those Amutas, and that was quite a lot of Vikings. I'm sure maybe regretting trying to push in like that. But Soul, Soul is the one with the Medivacs and the Marines, so he's continuing to pressure BCQD's economy, which has already been low. Yeah, this has actually done a really good job, too, because, I mean, that, that got to that natural base earlier on as well. Trey loses the medevac here, but again, it's that logic that like a good defense is a good offense, and BC's never been able to push out to attack. He's not been able to use the Ravens, for example, behind mineral lines or anything like that. So both Soul and Optimus have benefited greatly from the uh, minor oh. attacks at the back of the base. Problem is, though, will they have benefited enough to hold on this attack? Nurture's actually coming in with a pretty large army supply. Yeah, not nearly as large as Optimus and Soul combined. Uh, a couple of tanks help them out too, but I'm not sure how close they're going to be able to get. The Viking control is absolutely in favor of Optimus here. And he Yo. is like, he's going mech. He's adding on a lot more of these powerful units. Point defense drone to keep the Mutas alive against the Vikings is actually a really cool teamwork move. Yeah, it was. I do believe Optimus and Soul are fine defensively, but behind this BCQD takes the third base, the other gold base, oh, while Nurchio expands the left and the right. I like that Nurchio's almost like, uh, I, I think let him do this though, it makes more sense. BC's yeah. got less workers, so he'll benefit more from the golds. Nurchio in the meantime has no problem, he's on like 70 workers right now. Yeah, I like the game plan. Uh, Optimus and Soul is going for like the slower build up, uh, Nurchio doing what Zerg does best, but now uh, oh, the tanks, they're the tanks. kind of covered, but not quick enough. Like, the Nudas still end up killing the tanks before they die. Uh, super elite skin on the Thor, by the way, always looks super cool. Oh, this I was a they had a <sighs> Oh, you know, I, 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 I really love the teamwork aspect of this, but while this goes on, Soul does yeah. drop down here, and this base from Nucho is going to get shut down. Unfortunately, yeah. it's killed, not, not even canceled. That was a large portion of why that looked like it was about to be broken, was that the bio had left. Soul took a chance right there, and it kind of ends up working out. Unfortunately, Optimus lost, uh, you know, I think some of his Vikings and those tanks, and it takes longer for him to rebuild. But he just get a base. Energy was still cut down to three, which is, like, reasonable. Ooh, that Liberator is not in a good spot. It's going to be taken up pretty quick. Doesn't even get a kill. Uh, can't lift up for very long. I mean, there's so much dead space for the mutas are going to be more powerful. Tries to snipe, I think, a few of them, but manages to get all of them. Very low health. That's actually what I really like about Nurture Choice to go mutas here. Not just because they're good objectively or, or this, that, and the other, but it, it's a good way to control the map where you would expect a Terran player to be constantly hovering outside of the bases with liberators or hiding in the corners of the medevacs. Mutas will make sure that none of that happens, but diving in with the mutas, he's not been able to grow this count very large, all things considered over this game, only on 10 mutas still. Man. So many of them are weak. You know, that, that could have been only four or five units defending if all of the red mutas had died either to the Vikings or the Marines. 
They barely managed to hold Morris. up against that drop. Clean it, it up. Shoot up. Um, Soul is going to continue trying against his best to, to harass. He's the one that's kind of in charge of that, being the Marine Medic player. Well, Optimus is do building up his Viking and tank army. It's cool. Like I, I remember we would talk about Salvation, excuse me, Forte doing this back in the day, where he would like open a lot of Vikings that would deal with muta openers in, in the Hots one v one scene. But and the way he's translating here is working out pretty well. Normally Vikings are not very good against mutas, but not bad so, like, They're not once they're getting gotten on top of, once the mutas reach a critical mass. They're really about reinforcing a missile turret or a Thor yeah. and getting the last shots off because they have decent range. Um, like that one right there popped off before it could retreat. Oh man, we also got a $20 donation we'll get to in a moment. Thank you kindly to uh, Iron and Y9. We'll read your message here in a moment, but we do have a pretty big attack set up. BC with a lot of tanks is very dangerous, but let's not forget, Nurtu can always take out those tanks with the Mutas if he's left exposed. But Soul covering the flank, stims on in. Not a lot of medevac support though, so this yeah. stim is actually a really dangerous move. Maybe a few too many drops, maybe he forgot a round of production, I don't know, but definitely would have been better with another medevac oh, or this... two. Still storming through here. This wrecks through the bases, but BC looks like he's being slowly driven off by Optimus alone. So, like 1v1 with the Terran here, 1v1 with the Terran and Zerg over here. And nobody's complimenting each other. BC and Nurtu had some really cool teamwork synergy going on in this game, but they've lost it by splitting up like this. Yeah. Looks like Nurtu barely has enough. To clean that up, which looks kind of uh, sketchy. I mean, Mass Marine versus what was mostly Ling Muta. Oh, jeez. He does clean it up. No, he's just lost 30 mutas this game, by the way. Constantly sitting yeah. around 10 to 12. Never really too scary of a count, but enough, you know, early going to take out the tanks. Now, not so much. Floor covering. Uh, the Viking control has been cut too, though. The mutas sacrificed themselves to cut down, you know, four or five, whatever. And Optimus didn't think he was going to lose the air control, perhaps? DC comes in with a surprise tank Viking push that is stronger than what Optimus had. Yeah, BC is like one of the old kings of mech. Optimus. I think, uh, you know, at first it was BC Cutie being torn down by Soul's drops, but then that swapped on over as soon as he got the three bases to Nurchio being the one dropped on. I'm not sure Optimus and Soul expected BC Cutie to be coming back with such a vengeance. They thought Nurchio was the one to worry about. Yeah, BC, I mean, it, it, to be clear, BC's been on gold base into gold base into gold base, and if this wasn't the case, I don't think he would have had any recovery this game. Nurtio obviously would have been from, benefited from these gold bases as well, but as we can see, it was well worth it because BC is now kind of in the late game starting to carry. I think he just totally has. You know, Nurtio, he's taken a lot of losses. He's you know, struggling to get above 100 supplies. Hatcheries died, Rita's died. But it all gave way for Beast Beauty to get to a late game mech army. Optimus went mech too, just not as strong. What's that uh, tasteless announcer pack line? Time to carry. You know, that yeah. classic line tasteless always says that's classic. so easily recognized. Time to carry. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, but Beast Inertio, Team Slavation Army. Take the first game of the series. Uh, but what did that $20 say? Coming in from Iron and Wine 9. Again, thank you so very much. Says, love the 2v2. Thanks for the entertaining cast. Well, thank you for joining us for it, man. And th going that extra mile, throwing a couple bucks our way. And up to uh, $35 out of our personal goal for the day. But again, we've already raised 400 for the players. I'm pretty stoked. But bits, donations, if you guys got them, if you got Prime subs still, if there's anyone that hasn't at this point, we'll take them. But uh, we're going to find out what the next game is as it's going to be up to... Optimus and Soul to decide which map we go to. Right. I imagine it takes a while to even look at what the maps are. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty stoked to see the turnout for this 2v2, not just from the players but from the audience, but the reception on top of that, like the people who got involved today, whether it was Prime subs or like contributing to the prize pool. I honestly came here today with the expectation that this tournament was gonna be like a chore. But this has actually been a lot of fun, and you guys have made it really awesome. Shrines of Lizul. Shrines of Lizul. Just doesn't make any. There's no. There's no word that. It's not making things. I'm sorry. Was any of that words or? I just don't understand the map maker names. This is what I ended on. No. Oh. Thought that was decipherable, but the other thing is it was like, why Lizul? 
<laughs> you kind of went into the old man riggedy friggin' and riggedy fucker 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 fucker. Can't remember who to invite here. Take a shot every time someone scans. Well, with the amount of Terrans playing, you guys are gonna get wasted quick. Ah, oh, he already joined. See you there, too. By the way, so combination straw poll as well as the um, Twitch chat general poll seem to indicate that um, individual colors are better. So we'll just keep rocking individual colors for now, guys. I I'm actually going to alt F4 real quick too to reset the mouse, middle mouse bug. I keep forgetting I can do that. Okay. So that's, it's... <laughs> It's such an annoying and tedious thing to do, but if you guys ever have this problem with the middle mouse button, just restart your client and it seems to fix it for reasons. Programming. I don't know. Slavation Army Hype. <laughs> this is what I love about the team names, actually. Like, I, I feel like it does add that little bit of personality to each of the teams. AmazingGaming.net is just like a meme that's been going on for like three plus years. The Abusement Park is a great play on words. So is the Slavation Army. Although, I don't think it applies to Nurcio, right? It would only apply to Beastie. Does Poland count as being... I don't actually know. I really don't know. Is Poland See, considered as being Slavic? I wasn't sure either. And I'm like, well, it's kind of like saying something is Mongolian, right? Like, there's a lot of there's a lot of things like that tie back to that overarching... Oh, no, Present, according to Google, present-day Slavic people are classified into West Slavs, uh, which is Czech, uh, Poles, and Slovaks. East Slavs would be Belarusians, Russians, and Ukrainians. Yeah. And uh, Southern Slavs, which would be Serbia, which is BCQD. So it actually totally works. It checks out. The pun is real and good. I was willing to believe it. I mean, me too. But even if it, even if it didn't check out, I still think it's just a funny enough name that I'm like, yeah. Good job, you guys did it. Even, even if we named ourselves that, it'd still be funny enough. It's the past. <laughs> Fair enough. Yoga Gear in chat says, I hope we get a base trade TV and Zombie Up announcer pack really soon. Well, I can tell you this much, unless somebody makes some noise on Reddit, that ain't never gonna fucking happen. But that's another discussion for another time. We're getting into game number two in this best of five. It's still the first semifinals. Today's tournament is powered by Twitch as well as Matcharino. Of course, we don't have Matcharino on the overlay though, because they kind of stepped in a bit late. So whoopsie poops, but yeah, the top side, it is gonna be the Yellow Terran Optimus. And his ally on the right, Soul, the Baboons. In the bottom position, as the teal Zerg, it's Nurcio, and the pink Terran, Beastie Cutie. Now this is an interesting map, because this is kind of like what we talked about before. It's 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 uh, a gang up map, right? Where you want to just kind of pick off one player because they're all exposed. So getting really aggressive could be super beneficial, but... I don't think we're going to see anything quite so all-in like we did with the laser, for example. Mm, it ended up working for a laser. I'm not going to drunk. Oh, on the hot scale, I'm a In a weird way, I guess it ended up working to give you thermal the expansion, which ended up winning them the game, but really didn't work out for the guy that did the Roach Rush. Ooh, Zombie Group, is it wrong if I want to refund a donation? <laughs> Pence? Why? Ing Brigson. No thank you for the $10, because he says cats are lame. That's, that's you know pretty actually, bad. No, you know what? We're going to keep the money and keep it away from a dog lover. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't mind dogs, but to say cats are lame is just, I mean, that's just personally attacking. Can we just put a pause on that attack? See, but it works with cats and dogs. I need, I need you know... No, I wasn't gonna. No, I'm not gonna. I'm actually not gonna pun. Never mind. No, no, I'm not playing that game. No, oh, no, okay. no. I'd lose. I already know it. It's not happening. <laughs> uh. Meow, meow, zombie go. This attack, by the way, ends up being a little bit scarier than I think BC was hoping. Three Reapers getting here really. Dark and dangerous as these SUVs start falling apart. I mean, he was trying to go for the bunker. He knew that this was a possibility. But I think it's already snowballed too much. 
I'm missing so many out of proxy this time, but they attacked the right player. Oh, I like that depot block. Right Buys map. a little bit of time, but oh, is that not a cancel? I don't know. I like that BC Cutie tries to escape to his partner, though. Like, <laughs> you know, is like, don't bring this shit to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want your bad mojo, dude. <laughs> Uh, I'm sure he feels a little more comfortable with his Roches and Ravager, but this looks like it's going to be just uh, giving up base temporarily. This could have been all the SCVs dead. This could have just been uh, like a situation with you Thermal, having to lift and do absolutely nothing to help your partner. He even saved a Cyclone. That does seem to be what's happening now, and it's been unfortunate. Nurture, by the way, is proxying a hatchery while all this goes on. Okay, I'm, so I I'm a little taken back by this. <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, it's kind of in plain sight, too. It's something if, that Soul knows about, but doesn't do anything about yet. If BC gives him all his money, he might actually be able to proxy some roaches out of this immediately, but yeah, they see it. And I'm I'm left flabbergasted by... <laughs> by I think he was but... thinking that this would uh, bring the Reapers back. You know, you gotta take a proxy hatchery seriously, man. I don't disagree, actually. I think that, that would actually be a really cool thing if that was all it came down to, and then he cancels it, but... Oh, we got the attack on the Cyclone. There's really not a lot to defend these bunkers. You just walk past them, too. Not. Yeah, it's such a wide open area that you can kind of walk past the bunkers. Oh, just I think he just cursed about it. Oh, dude, this is actually such a tight situation. Well, normally that would be a silly, funny mistake. That could actually be one of those things that makes or breaks the game. Yeah, he's going to lose another Ravager that was just kind of caught behind. Three Ravagers will do a decent amount of the SCD line, especially without any reaction from Optimus, trying to bring his Reapers forward here. There's the SCD pool. You gotta be careful with Cursor Battles to splash damage a little bit, but also friendly fire and another Ravager killed by his own units. That being said, the Hatchery did finish, all things considered, but I think there's enough bio out of Soul to handle this. Yeah, I mean, he's producing one Roach from a time. That doesn't seem very useful. Uh, you know, if, if this is a natural base, I'm kind of on board the Nurcio, like, kind of carrying up or BCPD along. BCPD is back to mining on the gold base. But because this is a proxy hatchery, and it's not helping, it's actually, in fact, hurting him, because he's still putting roaches over here, I think. You... Sorry, this is a little bit unrelated. Notice with these marauders, they're both using skins for them, but they're different skins. It actually looks really cool. This is where I love the idea of what the war chest brings in. I guess you're not going to see too many team games, though, to, to really fully benefit from things like these skins. But yeah. hey, Amber Securities. One day we'll just have all the skins. Well, for BC, he is on the path to recovery, and I think his choice of tech here is probably the best one given the situation. A Banshee with a bit of cloak, I don't think is going to devastate anybody, but when you know your opponents have got so many Marauders, and you know is going to be hurting on those Roaches, a Banshee ends up being a really good complement to this. BCQ might just be the unexpected champion again. Nurchio, I mean, despite making last game. <laughs> yeah, Nurchio, despite making a lot of roaches off of that proxy hatchery, not really being too useful, still has a very sizable army that can at least hold. Uh, you know, a couple lings would actually be really great too to have against these marauders. So they couldn't kite, but that's a lot of roaches. It's it's a one base zerg. Usually, you see them expand at some point, but. I guess if they do truly stick on one base, they can still make a decent army from it. I guess the plan really is like all in with what you got and hope you catch them playing economic. Because I mean, they did expand behind this, and there's a chance this could work, but I think the chance is kind of low. Speed coming out too. Oh, let's see the first skin version of a widow mine, by the way. Forgot that they added those in. Cool. Well, this banshee is already doing a bit of work. Oh my god. Oh, oh my, god. my god. Somebody clip that. Nurcho is a literal god. Well, and this Optimus is so perfect too, because Optimus was, if, if he wasn't running these SCVs around, he would have been microing those medevacs, he would have been paying attention. The Banshee goes down, so, well, that is in part Nurcio, it was also in part Beastie. That's another sick set of teamwork. That was very unfortunate for Optimus to lose medevacs to Ravager Corrosive Biles, especially, you know, like, perfectly lined up ones. It wasn't only one medevac died or you got heavily injured, literally both died. That is not, not ever supposed to happen, ever. Uh, this army is going to be cleaned up too. He did split preemptively, so there's something in the main base. Yeah, some legs running around. 
This is actually good for catching those medevacs too, so. As this goes on, you know, they scan to see if Nurture is expanded. Now being aware that this is like a one base Zerg, it's kind of like deceptively a one base Zerg though, because I feel like at some point BC could just start sending Nurture money. He might have an excess of minerals, but it is hard to say. It is literally a one base and, and one. Um, so well, BC might just be like, no, I need my minerals. <laughs> BC's weakness is that he really doesn't have anything at home to fall back to, so they are kind of dedicated to trying to kill Sol and maybe, or Optimus, one or the other, and making this like a 1v1 situation for Nurchio. As he runs across the map, like, Sol does have all the defense at home. It, it's really, Optimus is the only one attacking right now. It looks like these links can clean this up. Yeah, the links absolutely can. Oh, this is the so like BC with bunkers. He's going to zone out. He's going to zone out any defense on this ramp. Yeah, the Banshees helped out enough, enough too, like... Soul was the one with a very good army, and forces combined, Armistad doesn't even beat Souls, but it it was a t the army type that beat him. Well, this drop of the main is struggling to be cleaned up. It looks like it will eventually be cleaned up. I love this though. Nurture's like, he's like the bodyguard, right? Looks like it got cleaned up, so he's he's in some trouble yeah. now. But he was like standing watch outside. Still though, it's not gonna be enough. The teams are gonna tap out, and the game's gonna even up now, one to one. Pretty close. Not bad. Not bad. Quick commercial break, though, guys. Just keep it quick, brief, and swift, and we'll see you for game three when we get back. Hey, guys, we're back. Uh, we're still waiting on the map pick, so it's taking a little bit longer than expected. But a lot of people clip that Nurture move, which is good to see. I, I've talked about this before. What I love doing, like, you get moments like that, which are really sick clips, right? But I love going back through, the, like, after we're done a cast and seeing who's clipped what throughout the series. Because we can see, like, anytime you make a clip of the channel, we can see it, right? And it says who's made it, when it was made, etc. Uh, so it's, it's really cool just going back to see what, what, what bits of the cast are things people like. And most of the time, those clips are, frankly, really dumb, silly, us embarrassing ourselves type moments. And rarely is it of, like, really cool plays like that. So I'm glad we got some, some good clips of that Nurtio snipe. Yeah, not ended up, uh, <clears throat> didn't end up being enough, but it was cool for clips. Yeah, as long as you don't know how the outcome of the game went, it's a really awesome play. Hmm. <laughs> That's the beauty of clips, it's a 30 second long thing. <laughs> oh, these keys gonna play Protoss? Interesting. There are no rules against swapping races, so by all means, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, we also had a $20 contribution to the prize pool because C. Wealth likes to, uh, he likes the icky sticky coming in here for make it 420 even. Oh, says, oh. Thanks oh. for doing this. Awesome. Greetings from Switzerland. Well, Quelf <laughs> or C. Wealth or C. W. Elf, however you'd like your name pronounced. I know you've been around on the channel for a while. It's not our first time seeing you, so I'm glad to see you're enjoying the show. And thank you for uh, getting extra involved. Good deal. But we are getting into game number three. Got our first bits of the day coming in from Dubbenwolf. Thank you very much for taking some stabs at that bit boss, claiming the title for himself. But we are in game number three. As I said, things are tied up 1 1. And on the rightmost side of the map, it's the Slavation Army, made up of Nurchio and BCQD. On the left side, as the Yellow Terror and its Optimus. And the Red Darren Soul. I keep forgetting to alt F4 to fix the bug. <laughs> yeah, people right have like now. the auto sweet. Okay. <laughs> people have the auto <laughs> scene switchers. I need like an auto F4 switcher. Like every time a game's over, just like force quit the game for me. Yeah. I miss being able to rely on that. I never used the scene switcher ever, actually, so I. It's not so much the scene switcher I miss, it's just the ability to have my middle mouse button not in the screen all the time. Hmm, that's kind of annoying. One day they'll get around to fixing it. So, Beast Cutie changes to Protoss, Snorcho staying as Zerg. Optimus and Soul, wall and all. Yeah, this is one barracks piece. I find this really interesting that he chose to do this because a game one he carried with his main race for those who don't know why the way BC has played many random tournaments in the past as well as all the races so it's not like he doesn't know how to play Protoss but Terrence still his main race is probably his best race my thoughts on this are it's a strictly versus Terran thing versus two Terran thing because I feel like he did well and he carried game one from being behind game two he made some cool stuff happen but he was so limited so I doubt this is coming from a place of frustration 
Yeah, I can't believe that it is. Uh, this here is like has a lot of things up his sleeve, so I want to say it's very, very planned. In fact, last game I would say they got even like kind of close to finding a solution back into the game with him as Terran, just didn't quite work out. Uh, but it's it's known to uh, uh, miss his soul. Do you think it's because of the, actually? You know what? I wonder if this is because of the map. Not just because it's fast oracles and the rush distance, but like this is a map you're gonna abuse Tempest in the middle like so badly. Oh, that's certainly a potential. Uh, he is adding on a Stargate, starting off with Mass Phoenix and going into Tempests, Aries, or what have you later on could be effective. I don't even I don't even know that I I would make too big of a deal about carriers or otherwise. I think I think it's just simply the range abuse, but. Uh, man, I'm just trying to think, like, we haven't seen hashtag Roddy builds in a while. And I don't think we'd see them on this map either, but it's still, like, that same logic of just, like, you can't reach the Tempests. Even with a really good duo like Nurture and BCQD, I'm, I'm still really hesitant on anything that is super quick to Battle Cruisers, for instance, or Tempests. This Oracle skin looks super cool. Like, I've, I've hated the way a lot of in the production yeah. tab skins look, but this Oracle yeah, okay, one looks yeah. pretty cool. Well, the Wood of Mine I just noticed for uh, Optimus kind of looks like a crab. Yeah, I'm literally just like a crabby on the on the production tab, but I'm still I've still never looked you at the production look tab and it's been so like much bigger. What the hell? I've never looked at the production tab and said I don't know what that is. Uh, but that looks like it has like I don't know. It was designed. Horns? Yeah, yeah, like it has horns, man. It's like sleek. It's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. Well, we'll see it come here, and unfortunately, it will probably be dealt with right away. Yo, this almost looks like they, they took the, a mix of a raven and an oracle and put them together, and that's that's how you got the skin. Oh, you know what? It, it looks like the... the vi No, wait, what is it called? In co-op, the flying one that comes around. The big, dangerous uh, one. <sighs> I wish I had better words. <laughs> yeah, I was see, you're nailing this description, dude. Like, I What are they called when, they, uh, when they're like the big boss ones that come out of the rifts? Like, the hybrids? Yeah, thank you, a hybrid. The flying hybrid. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can kind of see that. It's just missing tentacles and stuff. Yeah. Anyways. Oh, it is taken care of. I don't know how that marine reached that far, but it... Last shot, got it. Medivac barely Ooh. lives. Two things go great for Optimus and Soul. That was a six health escape, by the way, guys. That was seriously like one shot from dead. Well... It might be a good opener, but this is hardly any damage that you you look at and go, "Wow, how are they going to recover from that?" Like this is right. been a nuisance. Meanwhile, Nurtio scouts. Mm -hmm. It's getting plus one carabas and just continuing to expand. Uh, it was Phoenix's, you know, after the Oracle, and we even have a Twilight Council come down. So I'm still not sure about you know, if he even will go into really mass Stargate or Tempest abuse. If he does, then I don't mind it, you know, long term. I'm just glad he didn't do it immediately. I still think I like the idea of the potential for it, but at the same time, if this is just simply a lot of Phoenix, we know from previous 2v2 tournaments and from, frankly, even looking at the contrast of 1v1s, mass Phoenix are totally viable versus Terran. In fact, very, very helpful. I do wonder about them pairing up with a Zerg player specifically. <laughs> well, uh, what's scarier, right? Phoenix and Adept or Phoenix and Banlings, right? <laughs> like... That's gonna be a nightmare to deal with. I would still, I would still say Phoenix Adept because Adepts actually continue to live after they've shaded through. Painlings just die. Well, yeah. I mean, hopefully they live through it. Regardless, I think it's a it's a scary combination that there's the potential for anything to be paired with these Phoenix other than Adepts, even if it is just paired with more Adepts, perhaps. But it's Blink I Stalkers yeah. that are coming out of Beastie. See, for me, I so first of all, yeah, he didn't go for a second Stargate at, at any point, so it wasn't really going to be mass Phoenix anyway. It's going to be a supportive amount of Phoenix, and I'm I'm kind of glad. I do wonder what it's going to be like with a a Zerg player that's playing Ling Muta. That seems to be what Nurture is going for, still on Lings, not Roach Hydra, which is like the slower sturdier composition that I think Phoenix is a complement a lot better. So I couldn't hear you over the Koreans. What? <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought nearly as loud as yours. Mine is always stupidly loud, and I don't know why, but... Uh, Daroops. Daroops is on fire. Thank you for the $25, dude. Mucho appreciato. What language is that, Rifkin? The Korean commentators yelling in Korean? No, the appreciato. Oh, that's... <laughs> Spantalian. 
<laughs> That's actually a perfect. I think it really is Spanish and Italian mixed together. That's perfect. <laughs> you know, I come from my home country of Spantalia. <laughs> <laughs> yes, correct. Yeah, sure. Okay, so double medevac drops to the north. There's a lot of creeps right up there, so Nurtio should be able to react. They're kind of focusing on the bottom side. This piece of QD is the depths. That sounded really weird. He has his Protoss. Um, but he's gotten out to the blink, but he's adding on a robotic spay. Ooh. And Nurtia went to Ling Hydra, actually. So I guess the Mutas were because of the map they were on. Yeah, and uh, same guy, by the way. Back to back with another $25 donation. Tip. Whatever you want to call it. Thank you kindly, dude. That is way super generous. If, uh, if Darups is in chat, guys, give him some love. Surrounded. We Medivac. Oh, nice snipe there. Optimus oh, yeah. is looking to hit the bottom side while this goes on, too. Unfortunately, though, while he might be able to zone out the ramp, there's not a lot of pressure points he can apply right now. There's no Nexus that's being built. There's nothing to deny. I like how Nurgio is a kind Zerg partner and left a little bit of room for he's here to build. Yeah, stuff. he's not a dick with creeps, right? Exactly. I. That must be so nice. Uh, yeah. I mean, I wonder what that's like. You know, I hate, that's like one of your, like, <laughs> I think your more popular YouTube videos, too. It's like you just being a dick to uh, me and laughing about it. It used to be, that's for sure. <laughs> well, the Colossus out now is going to start changing things up quite a bit. And the uh, continued ling, uh, I can't even harassment, but like, he's dealing with the drops. Nurture is dealing with the drops, giving BC a little bit of freedom to deal with everything else. But down here is still a problem. Now, it's still, again, not on any pressure points. There's no need for them to respond to this just yet. And that's why they're letting Optimus kind of just set up on the ramp. They gain nothing by attacking into him right now, and they lose nothing while he sits there. Yeah, BCQD would like a third base, I expect. <laughs> but, yeah, I think it's just safer to let him stay there while they go and deal with other things. Drops in a grab, plus two melee. That's Ooh, not bad. That's pretty nice deny, actually. Ah, uh, but you know what? Widow Mines end up splashing some of the Metamags and the Hydra's get some good damage in there too. Looks like the bottom side is broken with the Ling attack wrapping around for the back side, and now these high, uh, I guess, no High Templar. Oh. I thought it was a High Templar. Never mind. Psych. Yes. Yeah. Well, the <laughs> Metavac barely gets away, uh, so Austin still saves a large portion of his army. Still have this job to deal with, of Soul, so that's constantly keeping Nurcio on his own side of the map, not helping defend against this. Pounce on top of that one Colossus. Second Colossus, though, uh, maybe enough? Oh, nope, not without the Adepts. This is where I really like what BC has if Nurcio's here to support him, but Nurcio's up here at the top trying to deal with these drops, so left his own devices, BC loses everything Dang. and has to cancel this base. And that was a slow build-up of, build of an army. Uh, I mean, it was mostly gateway units. Of course, two Colossus going on is always painful, but it's that... He's still only on two bases. He does not have that surplus of economy to just instantly warp in all the stalkers and depths that he just lost. And yeah, Optimus is really running away on this side. I don't know that Nurtio can 1v2 and carry this. I don't think so. I, I don't think he ever got to a big enough place. It's not like he out expanded anyone. It's not like he got to a bigger and better composition tech-wise. Optimus and Soul just played a really good TBZ and TVP respectfully. Like, those Colossus are cool when they die. I'm sorry, that was awesome. <laughs> I was like, oh, what? Uh, yeah, that was cool. GG. Listen, Soul, taking the lead here. Next, just like my useless teammate left doesn't mean the game's over yet. Like, yeah, he's useless anyways. He's such a good He's got energy. There we go. Taps out. Whoa, and gives the GG. Well, if your partner does something, then you have to do it too. You literally never <laughs> say good luck, have fun anytime we. Ever do anything? You can't say that. You cannot <laughs> say that. Yeah, my theory is that if my partner does it, then I don't have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> no chill. Zombie Grub has no chill. All right. Well, BC Cutie and Nurture are actually on the losing side of this now, and on their last life. So they've really got to bring it back with whatever they map or whatever the next map pick is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, De Roops in chat, by the way, says, For the love of StarCraft, greetings from Belgium. Oh, hey, dude. Thank you. I, uh, I appreciate your love of StarCraft. Dare's freaking about the 420 prize. Well, yeah, this is awesome. So, like, let's let's give a quick recap. Like, this is, like, a great Sunday. Normally, like, 
we haven't put up donation goals for ourselves. We don't try and raise money for ourselves like ever. We've almost got 100 bucks for the day, which means me and Zombie will get 50 bucks each. That's awesome. Compared with, uh, combined with the $420 raised for the prize pool, like, that helps, uh, that, that basically cancels out our contribution to the prize pool, and it still stands at 420 That is so sick. It's a good day. It's a good day. Good is it new, Catalina? Man. <laughs> I, I, like, everyone expects so much more out of that one. It was just meant to be, like, an update. I don't think it's going to be the new hype intro, actually. If anything, it seems like Acolyte seems to be the most well-received new intro we've made. Stupid anime. <laughs> I wish actually, I was thinking, I wish we had more footage. Like there's not a lot of footage of us when we go to events. It's always stuff we've done or cast Everybody, at said events. So I really wanted to like go through and find clips and like make a base trade TV as an anime intro, but there's just not enough. There's like no footage of us anywhere. <laughs> oh. Sit stuck. Uh oh. Well, now you're the player. Officers. Why don't you just automatically give it to the other observer? I feel like that should be the default. That would make a lot of sense. But I also imagine the amount of times someone needs to leave the game to stop a countdown is very minimal. That it'd probably be easier to just put a stop countdown button in instead. <laughs> no! <laughs> the dumbest thing I've ever heard. How dare you, Rifkin? <laughs> Who do you think you are with such outlandish. <laughs> I was really not expecting such a good idea. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, like, it doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> oh, boy. So proud right now but okay looks like they swap players around we'll be hopping into overgrown facility this might actually be the first time we're seeing this one today <laughs> no. oh, let me see oh wait oh it's like diagonal okay interesting Ooh, Ink Control has made the announcement. August 27th, 6 p.m. The show is happening. It's Idra, Artosis, Nuni, and Tasteless. They actually got Idra for this? I'm pretty excited. I'm like, I'm like 50 50 because I wasn't here for the Idra hype. I only got to come in at the very end when he was being a super dick, so I didn't like Idra. And I wasn't there to experience his tournament wins to be on the hype train. So I that's mean... a. For me, that's a weird lineup. But, in control, tasteless artosis and alone is enough to sell it for me. That I would want to watch it. You might not have just not liked Idra in general. Cause I don't think he's any different, really, at the end. He got Maybe. fired at the end. But... No, he wasn't. Well, I don't want to offend anybody because it's not like, again. I want to make this clear. I'm not saying I hate Idra or anything. I just don't like Idra the same way everyone else was on the hype train. Like, I don't have that that love for him, but I don't oh, have that pretty... distaste either. Well, it's actually, I think, even more hype, not just because Idra's StarCraft II career, but Idra was actually, like, a big deal for Brood War foreigners, and Nuni was too, so... Considering that, I think most of what they can talk about is remastered. <laughs> I think it was, was it Austin we ran into? I, I asked him too, I was like, I sat down like, did you didn't really pronounce Nuni? <laughs> that, I'm not gonna, actual that was the oh, summit. I'm a hot skill, I'm a 10, baby. Oh, the summit, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like... <laughs> I just couldn't believe it. <laughs> I thought it was a meme this whole time, dude. But okay, we got a <laughs> contribution coming in here. Ten dollars from Arald M81. I'm probably saying that wrong, but thank you for the ten dollars, dude. Says just to fill up the missing dollars in the bar, dude. You are a fucking savior and a sweetheart. Thank you kindly. But we're in game number four, and this might be it. Spawning here in the upper right, they lead two to one and to put their opponents on their last breath. It's the combination of Optimus and Soul. A couple of baboons. In the bottom left as the Red Zerg, it's Nurchio. And the teal Terran again. Beast cutie. I forgot to alt F4. God, I keep talking about it and then just not doing it. Well, we uh, keep talking about other great ideas like putting a pause timer button in there. <laughs> 
<laughs> Beastie, your reaction. I love your reaction to that, by the way. Uh, Beastie going back to Terran, I think, makes a lot of sense. I really, truly think the Protoss swap had entirely everything to do with the map specifically, but I could be totally wrong on that point. Uh, keep in mind, Beastie is streaming his point of view, and he's on a call with Nurtio, so if you guys really want to get inside their heads, go to his stream. It's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I would have also liked to have been there listening to what their strategy was because we were guessing the Protoss for the map, Stargate thing, and then it wasn't even it wasn't even like a decent number of Phoenix. It was actually a very normal number of Phoenix from BCQD. So it's, uh, so wrap my head around that one. But back to Terran it is, and they are on their last life. So this is going to be some Reaper pressure again, at least committed so out of Optimus, but uh, Soul is actually expanding behind this. So it's kind of like one player to put the other player on edge while the other guy expands. Hmm. I mean, it's only two Reapers. It's really not committed to the point of like three racks or anything. This looks like it's getting an island base. It's so far back there. Yeah, I guess I can kind of see that. There was this one map that had an island base in the top center. And it had like four gases and like 15 mineral patches or something. I like I love being a Terran player and just floating my command center over there. <laughs> I do not remember that one. Alright, well joined up with the regular Reaper production of his allies. Suddenly this is a lot of Reapers to deal with, and so far Optimus has been pretty good, keeping his Reaper control in check and not letting any of them get too close to death. Just, you know, almost mortal flesh wounds. Yeah, but it's like a mutilisk, so if you don't kill it, who cares? Yeah. Spinecrawler got made out of Nurture, so he was taking this very seriously. Mm, yeah, I mean it's it's a medium-sized oh. map, and it is two Terrans rushing the single, single See Zerg, so he should later. take it seriously. <laughs> I think it's physics. I love when the Spinecrawler launches things like it's underwater. I don't understand what causes that, but anyways, the Reapers get caught. This has been dealt with. Nurture barely breaks a sweat with his defense, but. I mean, the argument is, okay, you force a spine crawler, the queens came out, maybe weren't injecting, like... I, I don't think this caused enough damage. And now that there's an immediate counterattack coming across the map, the cyclones will tear down those depots almost immediately. Then the links go through. Mm -hmm. I actually think attacking oh, the rocks is the weirdest way to go about doing this. That is an open pathway to one of the players, so yeah, if, they, actually, if they're not scouting it, then do it. I actually really like that he started building a bunker immediately back there, just to be safe, but that being said, I don't think the bunkers will cover, even if they finish in time, because here we go to break the wall. I love that. The Cyclones basically get those, like, winged decals on the on the cars. It's really not much. <laughs> <laughs> they can go they're faster. Really they're like the horn room glasses. They're just, like, <laughs> unnecessary oh and ugly. They really are the... They're not a very good skin, but, you know, they give us so many, they've got to... There's bound to be a couple that are terrible. Well, the bunkers break. The lings are doing quite well. The cyclones retreat back. If they get the lings in front of the cyclones, they can once again fire upon everything. Tries to get on top of that weak one. Nice micro back out of Beastie. Mules get dropped. Lings get cleaned up. And this ultimately is handled. But this brought Optimus down to 12 SCVs. Yeah, that's still an effective attack, I believe. The BCQD is only Ooh. just now expanding. Oh, Banshee's all, real nice. Yeah, all the Marines were in the other base trying to defend, so this Banshee's picking up quite a few SCV kills, already up to six. Yeah, didn't even pull the SCV, it's just... It was an easy peasy. How many kills does that Banshee have now? Nine. Nine kills. I know, it's like really hard to tell with this. Uh, this is why I hate the WCS overlay, but yeah, nine kills. And on top of this dude, it's still racking them up to so 12, and it's all SCVs, no marine kills just yet either. Really, just the most damage done to the economy, because now Optimus on 16 workers, Soul on 21, compared to the 29 and almost 40 from Urchio. More Banshees coming to the other side too, and this has just been an absolute pain in their side. This is good. Nurtio and BCQD are in the last life, so they'd love to bring it back to an ace match, and this is a great start for them. Oh, Optimus is especially hurting. Yeah, full scan goes through and doesn't even kill the Banshee. Second scan goes through and doesn't kill the Banshee. God. Well, you know, luckily for him, their cloak is about to run out. He doesn't have the easy access to, like, a Viking that would absolutely kill them. So even the Cyclone doesn't get, get it. 15 oh, kills boy. on one, six on the other. That's 21 dead bodies from these Banshees, most of which are workers. But a big Doom Drop coming across the map to pay him back. 
A player going I back? Could. Your production's not yeah. going to be there for this. It's really not. The Hellions you know, get a bit of a concave and they shouldn't be too bad. Attack on the choke though and Ling's on the support and that's too much for the pure marine force to handle, especially since they don't even have combat shields yet. A little bit of damage done to the Medivax. The Cyclones can't quite catch this, but the funny thing is I think Nurcio is going to be so good to defend this. Meanwhile, there's a Banshee just still camping the other side of the map. It's not doing much, but it's still cutting out the odd Marine from production, doing some damage to the uh, buildings. Once Banlings are done, though, like for Nurcio, even without speed, the Banlings will wipe out those Marines. The hell is going to get shot off. <laughs> Big deny of the Banling nests. Right. Uh, he already made a couple Banlings, as we saw, but no more, and typical hooks was not started. So that was a nice pick off. I think the Banelings are a huge addition, obviously. Uh oh, these Banshees from earlier come back in. Uh, but I love the idea that the Hellions can accomplish the same mission. If there's Lings on front of the Hellions and the Marines are shooting the Lings, then the Hellions get to be the splash damage. Oh my good god, he's not gonna get the other one. These Banshees have done it. so much ah! damage this game, Zombie Group. This is like actually crazy sauce. That's too much damage. I mean, initially they were fantastic, but just to get more and more damage done, that's way... That's way too much. You even got another scan. I just thought it was going to be in range. Luckily, Dude, this, it's tank still. I just want to put, yeah, this was is lucky. like a grand total of five scans to kill two Banshees at the end of the day. It should have been another one. That Banshee should have survived. Yeah. This is quite terrible. Optimus is just stuck in a uh, bad spot. Very bad spot. Trying his best with the few Marines that he does have to help out Soul at least distract a little bit. Uh, no choice finally on Mutus. GG taps out. We're going to go to game number five, boys and girls. This has been a pretty good day for 2v2s. I love how back and forth this is. Because, like, for me, maybe Optimus can take a game off Nurcio. And maybe on, like, a really good day, like, he can actually beat Nurcio in, like, a best of three. But, like, I can't envision him beating him in a best of five. And we're kind of still in that potential scenario here. I'm sure the other teams, other teams, other semi final. Uh, they gotta be itching, bored, and waiting. But uh, we had another five dollars come in from Mikey Hun to the prize pool. It says, "Give us more two v twos." Greetings from Hungary. Well, thank you very much for that. And we filled out our donation bar. Today feels good. Uh, we're gonna go to a commercial break though while we get the lobby set up, guys. We'll be back in two minutes.